four thing. You're under control here, Tomos. Yeah, yeah, I hit the wrong button. All right, you Let got this? Make sure I look good, okay? <laughs> Baby, when do you not look good? Well, my birthday. I need to look extra. You <laughs> always look good, okay? <laughs> Are we ready? Do I sound oh. good? Oh, we're already started. We're already going. Like really close, or is this okay? Yeah, we. Oh, all right. Well, everybody, I don't remember what episode this is, but welcome oh. to this episode. We need to figure out which episode these are. It now. doesn't it's matter. The second time we've been doing. This. It's just another episode. It doesn't matter it's what episode it is. Episode. Today with Jared James, uh, Jared here, guys. Um, psyched to do this podcast studio. Got a little bit of a of an upgrade, a little brighter. Um, yeah. It's uh, uh, we got a lot of cool things happening today. We'll get into it for a second, mm -hmm. uh, in a second. But before I get to you, okay, Miss Linda, Ms. first want to say hello to producer Tom. Aww. Producer Tom is is extremely excited today um, because with this new studio, he's got buttons and gadgets and all sorts of things that could potentially mess up the show. Let's be honest. Hundred uh, percent. We have some random applauding happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just wants to hit a lightning bolt. Like I you don't even. All of these. We've got a rim shot. We've got laughter. Oh, a sad gosh. trombone. I'm gonna be hitting that at some point. Wait, we have laughter. Oh yeah, we got laughter. Oh, could we just can you follow me around? Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just say things aren't going too well on stage. You know, just hit that little laughter. I need I need a laugh track. Instead, I hit you with the sad trombone, so you'll get to hear that later. Hmm. You know, for that. Probably oh, did. Anyway. Anyway, on that note, uh, we're also joined here uh, by Linda. By Linda. But real quick, it's producer Tom's five year. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah, so we have to, we can't pass that. Okay, Tom. Tom has officially uh, been with me for over eighteen hundred and twenty-five days. Put it like that. Yeah. Right. Sounds yep. even longer. Yeah, sounds, uh, <laughs> sounds like I've been keeping track on like a wall somewhere, just scratching <laughs> off each one. Picture of me with darts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, it's been five years, which is crazy. That that. I mean, I feel like that went by really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, when you started with me, uh, you had hair on the top of your head. I did. Aww. I did. You were minus a game-saving back surgery? Yeah, two, actually. Okay. You began a female. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh my! Tom, Tom where, just, where is oh, the, sound? the where look, is the, the sound? look on Tom's face. He's like, I did. Like, you shouldn't have to think about that, Tom. Yeah, you shouldn't have to. Yeah. I hit crickets. Oh, you did. <laughs> okay, good for you. you hit okay. Crickets. No, man, but you you started uh, at the same time as Cat. Yeah. Uh, who many years was your nemesis? I don't know about that. Uh, I think everyone would agree. I don't know. Um, that's, that's wait, so it's also Cat's five years? Cat's five years as well, yeah. I call her the Oz. Oh, yeah, what is it? The I know the great Oz the great behind Oz, the curtain because yeah. you never see her, yeah. She I've runs my life her. and you never see her, yeah. The other, only, only other woman in your life that yeah. you allow yeah, to well. control everything. But my mother, huh? My mom's going to listen to this. Like, oh, mom, you hear that? I just want to make sure you heard that, okay? No. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, in all seriousness, Tom, it's it's uh, it's been a great five years. I am fully thrilled to have you, uh, and I do mean that. Tom is a force for good everywhere he is. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say that. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what you're looking to push right now. I'm getting ready. Getting but ready I always say applause. that if you have a problem with Tom, it's not Tom, it's you. Okay? Because because you know, yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh. Gosh. He's gonna he's gonna record that and play that back for his it's wife later. Really yeah. Fun yeah, next time he gets in an argument with his wife. Did you hear what Jared said? Do you hear? It's you. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's gonna have it on loop just over over the stereo at his house. Um but no, love having you, man. I, I can't wait to have you another oh. five years and uh I think everyone here loves you and yeah. uh uh, everything we do, you know, you do this, you do this, you do so much with us, and like literally our company doesn't run as smooth without you, you know, uh, which I think is very true. Uh, I don't just say that. That is, you know, oh, you, we know you hear me behind the scenes. You hear Not me behind the that. scenes. How do I talk about when Tom? When you had back surgery and you were gone, like it just kind of felt like things were just better. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's literally. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Maybe after this. <laughs> yeah. I said yeah. I can't wait for you to get we back. We all love you. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be here. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. So and like I said, you do a lot of different things, man. Like, um, uh, which I mean, you don't get to do everywhere you go, and I think it's kind of cool that you get to kind of wear some different hats, and you know, uh, while at the same time you're doing some more serious stuff within the company. Uh, sometimes too serious, you know. It, it's it's also nice that uh, you get to do this and have some fun and hit trombones and uh, you know handle some stuff with our VC stuff and and so Tom uh, wears a bunch of different hats and uh, and and really uh, kind of is the maestro kind of helping everything run. So yeah. we love him. We appreciate him. If you're if you're listening to this, you're watching this. Show him some love. Um, he's a good dude. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah. Happy five years. Thank and you. then uh, we have another. 
you know, also has a five. It's a big five zero for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Minus no. what? Mr. Was that a laugh track or a real laugh? Wait, yeah, laugh. yeah, yeah. Uh, no. No, no. no uh, this is. Boo. No. <laughs> uh, Miss Linda, my lady, uh, it is your birthday. It it's your birthday. birthday. Yeah. I, I love birthdays. I know you do. I love birthdays. I know you do. And um, you are. And not only mine, everyone's birthday. Yep. It's a big thing for me. You're not in the age bracket that I am yet. Um, but you look beautiful as ever. Thank you. Uh, you are an absolute joy as well. Thank you. And I think you know that. Uh, I'm looking forward to celebrating your birthday, um, mm -hmm. which, I mean, really, we've already been celebrating your birthday, but we're going to get together with some friends well, tonight. First of all, we celebrate all month. That is true. Yeah, it's a that is true. thing. So. We celebrate you all the time. I think that's true. Uh, one of the crazy things, though, that I think that people, we've kind of talked about this before, but it's kind of true, is that we don't, you know, we're going to get into, by the way, on this episode, we're going to talk about... Some more serious stuff. We're going to talk about commission lawsuits, and we're going to talk about buyer agency, and we're going to talk about uh, unemployment, and we're going to talk about all these kinds of things. Um, yeah, tech and real estate and all that kind of stuff. But before we get there, I think people would be interested to know, like, we don't really do gifts um, for the most part. I mean, we do gifts at times when it's, like, you know, appropriate, but we don't do gifts just because it's gift time. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people would find that weird. And probably a lot of people are like, you know, I'm not going to let my spouse listen to this. But it's because, like, our love language is, is not gifts, you know. That and I think, I think uh, we both view gifts as, like, y you came up in a world where gifts were a way to say I'm sorry or the way to just, like, check the box or do whatever. They didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Kudos to you for recognizing that. And for me, they were just another opportunity to get in trouble. It's like, you know, <laughs> did I get the right gift? Did I get the wrong gift? Did I get the, you know, whatever. Like, I put out a thing the other day on Instagram, and um, I think a little people were, I think people were kind of thrown off about it. By the way, we'll do a separate podcast. Tom, remind me about this, because I just released our nine rules for 2024. Um, and I think we'll do a podcast just covering those. But one of the rules was the key to happiness is to have no expectations. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people heard that, and they're like, well, that sounds awfully, you know, negative. Like, that's, you know, whatever. It, hear me out, guys. Like, when you look at almost every single conflict you have um, w with a partner, with a spouse in your life and your whatever, it almost always comes down to expectations. And um, something doesn't have to be bad or wrong or whatever. You don't have to get a bad gift to get the wrong gift. You, you don't have to do a bad thing to do the wrong thing, meaning it wasn't what the other person expected, yeah. you know? And it's like that. It's like the saying the comparison is the thief of joy, right? Um, I feel very similar about expectations. Like expectations are the thief of happiness, you know, uh, in the sense that even if everything that's in front of you is good, even if everything is um, the gift was good, the situation was good, the thing the person said to you was good, what people do is they have this these benchmarks where the, the litmus test is not whether it was good or not, is was it what I expected or not. And if it's not, then they automatically go to, then it's bad. Or then why didn't they do it? And, and then all everybody's insecurities jump in. Like we were having a conversation last night with somebody. We were at trivia night, and we were talking to the manager of the place. And it was actually quite a conversation. I don't know why we keep having these at restaurants, but she even started crying. It was a great conversation. And yeah, but, but, yeah. but, it, but it was all about, you know, she was telling us about her relationship. And um, really, I won't get into details, but what it came down to was her expectation. It was like, you know, every, it almost was like in every situation she was in with this person she was with, there were constant benchmarks, or I would like to call them landmines, where it was like, even if you got through nine out of 10, one landmine is a killer. And so like she, her, her significant other would pass nine tests. And then all of a sudden, you know, they go to a party, they do something, they do whatever, and he would not do anything bad, but wouldn't do what she expected. And then the insecurities would kick in and start to go, well, why'd you do that? Why would you think that's okay? Were you trying to do this? Were you? And all of this stuff started to go out, and it was like none of that was what he was probably thinking or intending. But what caused it? Expectation. Mm -hmm. And so we're not saying that you're not optimistic. We're not saying that you're not hopeful. We're not saying, look, I'm the guy that talks about hope being the opposite, the opposing, you know, force to anxiety, right? Like we understand that that's important. Um, but when you walk around in a world on a regular basis, when I say expectations are the thief of, of happiness, what I'm really saying is, you know, stop putting out landmines for everybody. And so when we talk about gifts, that was a long way to basically say, like when we talk about gifts and these things, for you and me, a holiday, a birthday, a Christmas, uh, a Valentine's, or whatever it is, 
is not another landmine to see do you love me or don't you love me. You either show me love every single day or you don't make up for it at the holiday, mm -hmm. right? And so that's, I think that's how, kind of how we view gifts is like, it's so corny, but like, I think you and I together is a gift to each other every day. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, I don't, I don't yeah. need a. It does sound corny, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's super true. But when I do get a gift, oh my gosh, it's like, it, for me, it, me, it just means like the world because. If it's, if it's a it's heartfelt. That, oh, well, yeah. It's also something that I, I don't have any expectations because you know, like what I want is more quality time. And yeah. just, I want, I need that. You're like, so let's curl up, watch a movie. Like, let's oh go out to God. dinner. Yeah. Like just, you know. So um, the gifts, the gifts I do receive are a little more special. Nothing On that else. note, it's over there actually. In the I did actually get you a gift, right? Like I mean. Oh yes, yes. Now we didn't have to get a gift, but this was more of a thoughtful, um, whatever. I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. Yes. But you want to get it out real quick? Oh, uh, I don't know what is it. Is it's it in it? the sorry. It's in the bag. Okay. Which um, bag are we going into here? Um, the right there. It's okay. in there. You'll All see right. It. All right. Here we are. Here we are. Um, just bring it over here, please. Here you go. Here you go. We got a gift. We got a I'm gift. I don't think you've seen this yet, Mr. Now let me let me producer. explain. Can I explain to them like what I did? Can I explain what this gift is? Yeah. Now and this. I'll show it to them. This may also be corny, um, <laughs> but it's thoughtful <laughs> and it's a it's a book and it's called Our Story. Uh huh. And it's all customized. I made us from scratch, as you will see in a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you write the story of us, and it's all throughout the pages, and it's just a nice little reminder to you of something you open up, and it kind of yeah. tells our story, because our story is different. We both came from other, you know, we were both previously married, we were both, you know, it wasn't, you know, uh, that kind of, so it was kind of just a cute little thing, and it's very specific, like it's got like inside things that you and I, you know, understand, and how we think, and whatever. And uh, so, yeah, rather than like a, you know, a diamond necklace or something, which would have been, oh, that's really cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you open that up and I saw you get kind of teary eyed. and You're like, oh, my God. And like you're loving it and you're reading it and whatever. And so to me, that's that's a little bit more. So let me set up the mood for everyone so everyone knows. Huh. We got in the car. <laughs> like Gary White in the background. What do you mean? Can we, we set the, the mood? Car. Can't get enough of your love, baby. And he's like, hey, baby. Oh, right before your haircut appointment. <laughs> hey, babe. And he hands me this book. Guys, when like, I have something, I, just so you know, I, I can't book? hold off. I Can need I put it. this book right here? Like, Tom, could they see this? Yep. Okay. This is the book. No. Our story. There no, you go. Tom, you could see the book, right? Yep. Now that I'm looking at it, I probably look more <laughs> like you, really. <laughs> so I look at this book. And I, I, it says our story every time is like the first time. Super cute. And then I'm like, I think that's supposed to be me. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. And I'm like, babe, I Apparently honestly, I made her as a black woman. I really think <laughs> that you just wanted to look a little bit tanner in the book. So you made me look a lot darker. So the <laughs> first thing so you say, the first so thing you say bad. is, so like, do you see me as a black woman? And I was like, <laughs> dark? what do you mean? Now, now you weren't the first one to say it. When I showed it to my kids, <laughs> they were both like, why is Linda black? <laughs> okay, I do have to say I'm probably this dark in the summer because I, I tan a lot. Thank you. I, I get very dark. I did us at our best. Very, yes, yes. Okay, but look at was, me. Look at me. Anyways, look at me. I'm tan this in book there. Is so cute, um, and just so you know, we are not partners or collaborators with this company. I have no idea. It's called the Love Book. But for those that are looking for a really cool, oh guys, guys, thing guys, there's do. so many things. There are so many different options here. And by the way, some of them are a little steamier. Oh, there's I, some really. I cute wasn't. I wasn't on going here. there because look, you know, we're gonna show this to the kids, and this is like, you know, it's a it's a wholesome whatever. But there's a lot of different options here, is what I'm saying. And there's so cute, cute stuff like this all the way down to, you know, whatever. But it's uh, it's super cool. I spent a whole night putting this together, uh, giving her a greater tan than she has. Um, <laughs> by the way, for anybody listening, really for anybody cool. listening who's not like watching. Let's not make it sound like you are a, you know, pale Caucasian woman. No. You're I'm, Middle Eastern. Like I'm you're all you're skin tone. Come on, Eastern, Tom. She doesn't hair. look like you or I. Look look at the skin. It's much darker. Yeah. I'm... Now maybe <laughs> not that. Maybe it's not no. that dark, but no. you know. But anyway, for those, this is a super sweet book and honestly, I think this would be great to even have like like series of like if you're doing like I don't know, creating things for people. What she just did was family. ask for another Anyways, book later on. I am just really impressed that you got another book published. Another? Oh, that was the only one that matters, babe. That's my third published book Anyways. right there. Yeah, that's Anyways, the one. Super cute. But this gift, honestly, like, it was very sweet to go through. And, like, just the words, the photos. Like, you could tell it was, like, a lot of thought was put into this. Yeah. Um, it was... 
it was it was sweet. the ultimate approval was when I finished it and it came in and my kids saw it my teenage kids <laughs> uh, at the time of listening to this guy's I'll have a 17 and a 15 year old and they read it and they were making fun of me the whole time they kept saying why is she black uh, <laughs> and then they read it and then he on one of the continents too it's like I'm on Africa too so they're like did you do this on purpose and I'm like I, <laughs> I didn't so then but one of the th- when they were down there, they were like, "That's actually a good gift." They were like, "That's actually it's nice." A cute yeah, gift. yeah. So that's okay. the kind of stuff we like. I said, "This is a good bedtime story for my children." Mm. <laughs> I'll read it to them. But no, super sweet. Something that I could absolutely like leave out and just have. I mean, yeah. it's really cute. Yeah. So thank so, you. Yes. Well, happy birthday. Uh, and then we will celebrate tonight. But we started the morning on your birthday here. Um, uh, you came by and we did, um, so we launched our health accountability group, right? So we've yes. got the people, if you guys are listening, shout out to you guys. Uh, we got a small group on a, a, a private Facebook group where every day we're holding everybody accountable. We're posting meals to have. We're posting snacks to go after. We're posting good exercises. Mm-hmm. Tell them what we did this morning. Let's yeah. get physical. Well, what do we do? Just so you know, it what was we do? physical with our group online. What do we do? <laughs> We did a workout. A yeah. Routine. And so we, it was like probably maybe 20, 25 minutes with the whole entire, what do you think? 20 minutes? 37. 37 but the actual minutes. workout was 20 to 25 minutes. It was such a good core. It Floor was routine. Core, um, a little bit of upper body. We didn't tell them what we did. So like we actually were like one of those YouTube shows where like it films you and there we were talking them through hold that form do yeah. this do that and we were showing them an example of like, like i do my floor we routine hoping that they were watching we don't really know. no they were we got comments <laughs> they were they were watching she she was really self-conscious about oh, the fact I that there was no really interaction like, yeah i'm like yeah. you know normally when you go to the gym you don't want the attention so i was like okay we're working out but this here. is what we promised everybody we yeah, told them we yeah. were going to bring them behind the scenes and we were going to you know it do was, things that we don't great. normally do and so we did it in my house and we're doing the floor routine and i got the my little pup jumping on my face, thinking I'm playing with him, you know, while we're doing it. Uh, and you remember that, Tom, when, like, when you guys would do it in the office and, you know, he'd be there doing, you know, whatever. And so um, <laughs> it was it was, uh, it was was really cool. And it's, it's been really cool, by the way, just seeing these people commit to, you know, what they're going to do and asking, I mean, asking the questions they ask. Listening to their – first of all, everyone jumped on those that were a part of it and shared their story mm-hmm. and their goals. And, oh, my – there was some, like – yeah tear-jerking stories like yeah. oh my goodness yeah. and then there are some powerful stories and yeah. like weight loss and journey. people have come so and far already it, and i know and the interaction and the feedback and like the follow-through has been amazing yeah. and it hasn't even been a week yet yeah like, it's been really really good yeah. but we're sharing a lot of posting workouts, every day what you do plans, yeah and um Yes, the options for snacks, like every, literally. Every and Linda time. was a trainer, and, and although she will continually try to tell you she doesn't know anything and she's not very, when you see her answers to her questions, uh, when people ask questions <laughs> in the group about different parts of health and how to do this and how to counter this, she absolutely knows what she's talking about. And so, like, I told the group that in the beginning, and then one of the answers you gave to somebody, I don't know, you sounded like a freaking doctor. Like, you went through wow. this whole thing. <laughs> and then I just replied, and I went, See everybody. She knows. Yeah, this I is somebody who doesn't know what she's know, talking I'm not about. No certified nutritionist or dietitian. Do you say I'm not no? I'm not no. I'm not no. But um, so I, I and I don't I don't ever want like someone watching being like, I'm Dr. James over here. She has no idea what she's talking about. Do you have a college idiot, degree? Idiot, idiot, idiot. No. So can you run a company? Yes, so, I could. I could run okay, so why is it counting one area not I another? I people just I just do you know what you're talking about or not, or do you need a piece of paper? I know what works for me. Whoa. So I, that. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna work for you, but it works for me. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna share it. You guys hear that? Anyways, we're pulling the confidence been... <laughs> out. We're pulling the confidence out. Okay. No, but it's been great, like to start off the year with a group like that that is super committed, all in, and we're watching it grow too. Yeah. People are still jumping yeah, in. Yeah. People is so are still fun. joining. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, well, we're doing it for two months at least, and uh, yeah, it's been really cool. Now, uh, having said that, by the way, anybody interested, JaredJamesToday.com oh, forward slash Get Healthy. You could jump in as an individual or with a, a partner or a couple. But um, you know what's been really cool is that we, we've seen that grow, and it's been really cool, like, having that group. And for me personally, uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about here. Mm-hmm. Um, for me personally, it's really cool because um, it allows us – it allows me to operate in a small group and do things a little differently and whatever. But it's been funny watching some of you online, okay, <laughs> because – I, I think I understand how Hollywood actors feel mm-hmm. when they get, what's it called, pigeonholed? Is that what it's called? Is that what it's called? 
where that where it's like okay you know Ray Romano can only be Ray Romano for the rest of oh, his oh. life <laughs> you know what I mean or know you know whatever going. it is it's like that's what he is he cannot play another part it's like he was acting yeah. like he's allowed to do other things right um it's been funny because part of what you know my when we talk about the new year and we talk about just in general business wise right um I've gotten more and more vocal about the fact that, you know, uh, we have a portfolio and that, you know, a lot of you know me as real estate coach, but people who knew me before you, before there was internet and everything else, knew me as real estate agent Mm -hmm. who then saw me doing real estate and they're like, wait, aren't you the agent? Aren't you? It's like everybody's always trying to label you as what you are. And so I'm purebred entrepreneur. I mean, if you look at my, if you look at my content even online i've had i've had uh, reels lately on instagram and stuff that have gone over a million views over 500 over whatever and some of them have to do with you know very specific real estate get listings get whatever and some are very entrepreneurial one of them is a story about my drunk uncle from years ago that is just purely entrepreneurial has nothing to do with real estate nothing to do with whatever and that's legitimately who i am mm-hmm. not the drunk uncle the <laughs> the <laughs> the entrepreneur yeah. right and so when a lot of you see me doing you know building the real estate coaching company and the the virtual coaching and the, all that stuff that is part of who i am and that will always be part of who i am right we have an organization like we're a company and it's like anytime people hear me say anything outside of here's the one two three of how to get the listing they're like whoa, whoa well, what is going on right now who is this guy and it's like the same guy I've always nothing's changed and nothing's different I'm gonna keep doing that stuff I'm gonna keep doing keynotes I'm gonna keep doing but now because of the internet and me kind of growing you know what I'm doing online and so and whatever I'm showing some of those other sides and one of the things I wanted to do was do this small health group where it's like I, I had somebody they're like well how are you still doing coaching if you're doing this health thing Guys, I've been doing the health thing all along. I do it every day. <laughs> yeah. I, I just I just wasn't posting in our group about it. I just wasn't, you know, you know, whatever. It's so funny. Like all of us, I'm a full time mom, but I also run a company. I'm also in a long yeah. distance relationship. Yeah. I'm I mean like we all do this. We can do more than one thing. All right, we all, yeah. Yeah. I know. And so like all of a sudden it's like, oh, you shifted real quick. It's not not even shifting. You didn't even shift. Your focus is I've been is doing still- this all along. Yes, like, you're just now inviting people into your living room. Correct. That's exactly right. That's the like, difference. Whoa. Now, where, where, now look, again, we have an organization. So it's like, you know, when we say, okay, he's a real estate coach. Yeah, but I'm not coaching thousands of people. Mm-hmm. So when I take, you know, when, I, when you see me post something and I'm doing something about health or I'm inviting people into a health group, that doesn't affect any of our, any bit, nothing. And it's I, just me saying, hey, let's help you get healthy because it's all part of it, you know? Yeah. What were you going to say? No, I, I was going to say, people need to um, I, incorporate that more in their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Like, um, especially in real estate. Like, yeah, you're in real estate, but invite people into your day-to-day. Yeah, that's it. And that's how, and we'll talk about stats in a little bit, but um, NAR released a, um, an article a couple days ago about where, where they're getting their leads. The majority of the leads are coming from social media. Yeah. I bet you they're following you because... They want to know you. That's They're not it. really following you because of the house they bought five years ago. That's that it. You sold. That's it, it literally is you. We might have used the hook in the beginning of oh, you absolutely. might have gotten me through real estate. You might have gotten me. Different people get that hook through different things. But look, how many of you at the sound of my voice right now use Amazon? Now, I think just about every one of you is saying yes. Do you just use it to buy books? Right. Because that right. was the original hook. Exactly. So did you all of a sudden go, wait a second. I'm not buying a you know, uh, pots and pans from Barnes and Noble, you know, what are we doing here? They're a bookstore. And it's like, no, 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 no. They were an online retailer. Mm -hmm. And so in the same way, I'm an entrepreneur, you know? So yeah, I have a very large and, 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 and flourishing, you know, real estate coaching company, real estate training company, which I love. And we've, and I spend a lot of time on and, and, you know, we have an organization and we have people in place and we have all those kinds of things. I have a very large and flourishing speaking business. Mm -hmm. You know, we have first up, we have broker assist, we have cleared and closed. I'm an entrepreneur, you know, like there's, there's all these different, you know, so at some point you guys will see me launch a 
some kind of a tribe for entrepreneurs, which will have real estate people in it, which will have roofers in it, which will have whatever. That'll be a separate thing. That's like a shop pop does not take me away. Like, it's like, I, this is guys, I've been doing this all along. Yeah. It's just a matter of whether, you know, you saw me put it out or not, or whether I displayed it on social or whether, but I'm entrepreneur, you know? And, and for a lot of you that look at that and go, you can't wrap your head around it. You know, it's like when Gary V went from wine to just purebred entrepreneur. Oh, yeah, like, that. you know, everybody's like, isn't he the wine guy? And it's like, no, guys, he's an entrepreneur who crushed <laughs> it in wine. Like, that's why he crushed it in wine. But it didn't yeah. matter if it was wine or insurance. He would have crushed it and anywhere. He's a wine that do that. Michael Boulay talked about him. And what? Now he's invested in whiskey. Does that make him not a singer anymore? Yeah. Well, wait a second. I can't a listen a to you. You're doing whiskey. Yeah. That's a great example. No. So. By the way, I loved it. You said earlier this week, you said you listened to an interview with Michael Bublé and you're like, is this my man? He like, reminds is this? me of you a lot. Of yeah. Him. Yeah. But, the, um, the fun, like the, 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 the goofy oh, yeah. behind the scenes side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, guys, I guess the point I'm making is that you're going to see more things like that. It doesn't take away from anything. That's why it's called organization. And rather than, um, you know, sit back and criticize and get like, wait a second, isn't he this? And trying to label, you know, that person that you should learn from it and say, how do I do that? Because it's what I've been preaching to you for years. You know, when you're in a real estate business, you are the core of everything. You are the focus of everything. You are Google to everybody. You are. So if you want to sit back and just make real estate commissions the rest of your life, good luck to you. But what have I said over and over again? You're a highly paid Las Vegas stripper, which means you got to do the deed to get the money. Like, that's it. You got to do it to get the next check, the next check, the next check. The commissions are one part. They are one stream of income. But if you're doing it correctly, that's not your only stream 10 years from now. There are so many different ways to be making money in real estate. And by the way, I'm not just saying this now. When I was in real estate and I was selling real estate, this same mentality prevailed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did not just sell real estate. Okay. That was the thing that got me into everything else. That's what got me into the investments. That's what got me into the ancillary services. That's what got me into selling ads on site. That's what got me into all of these things. Okay. But it was not the be all end all. And so you're always going to have something that becomes what people know you for, but you pull them in. That's the hook. Absolutely. Okay. But once you have that, you got to remember what you're working with. You got to remember the skills you have. You got to, you can't let other people limit you to be that thing or you walk around the rest of your life, not being what you actually should have been all along. And there's probably some agents and brokers that are listening to this that are absolutely taking advantage of their, their network by doing what you're doing. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of ads that come up. I'm not a licensed agent, but I see ads of top producing agents sharing marketing strategies. Yeah. And it's like, hey, do you want this? Subscribe. Yeah. Pay. Yeah. Here we go. That is another. It doesn't mean that they stopped selling no, real estate. No, good for them. Some will make it, they're, some won't. They're selling real estate, it's called, but they're also selling their strategy. And that's what it. Do, and that's they're it. creating their own little. The, and you're seeing funnel. if they're good enough. Some will make totally. it, most won't. Just like some will make it, most won't in real estate. Just like some will make it, most won't in any business. Mm-hmm. But the only way you find out if you have that skill, if you've got what it takes. Yeah. The only way you find out if you're a good gymnast is if you get up on the beam. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta see like you, you gotta be, you gotta flex those muscles and see if you actually have it. And look, guys, I do it every day. I do it all the time. And you hear a lot about the successes. There's a the lot of failures. Of muscles, you do. Yeah, the flexing. Of, I don't even mean to. That's just moving my arm. It's just a, uh, you know. Um, but it's just like literally, like that's just you know. I can't, I can't stress this enough to all of you who listen to me. Like, again, 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 and I'm gonna keep saying this over and over and over. Okay, don't. Just listen to what I'm saying. Watch what I'm doing. I mean, you're, we're starting off the new year. This yeah. is a great time to, you know, put something out there that kind of stretches yourself a little bit. Yeah. Make yourself uncomfortable a little bit. God, you know what see, I'm... <sighs> and see where it takes you. Okay, actually, I know we're talking about fitness. I don't know what you're thinking about right now. I'm actually thinking about something that I think I should... I think I should... So, like, when we're talking about this right now, like, when I keep saying, like, don't just listen to what I'm saying, watch what I'm doing, yeah. I'm thinking about, like, at the advance when I talked about leverage. Oh. And I made a, I made a statement. That was in your closing. Yeah, your and closing. I made a statement at that that could almost come off as arrogant, but I don't mean it arrogant. Like, listen to the words of what I'm saying. And I said to everybody in attendance there, I said, look, I do probably more than almost any of you in here because I do less than almost any of you in here. 
And you got to like chew on that for a second. Like, what? What does that even mean? Yeah. You know, like, what is that? Like, I do, I do almost more than any of you in here because I do less than any of you in here because it's mm -hmm. called leverage. Like, once you master something, you put a system behind it, you put some kind of resource, whether it's a human resource, whether it's a money, whatever it is. And now you have that thing going on a, you know, the reason why, guys, I'm able to do this and I'm able to shoot a podcast right now and I'm able to shoot those videos that, you know, go viral on Instagram or TikTok or whatever they are. And I'm able to, uh, you know, run all these different companies. Companies, uh, and I'm able to travel and go see you and I'm able to go do my boys trip and my guy and whatever is because over time what I've done is I've, I've created these building blocks where like I just create leverage and I gave this example at the advance and I literally put up on a screen and I was like guys here's all of the things that I don't actually do. I have a guy who comes and meets me where I'm at and washes my car. I've got, I've got a cleaning person at my house right now. I've got handymen that come and do blank. I've got, and I just went down the line of all the things that are taking people time that I have outsourced in order to create leverage. Because the more of that time I can create for leverage, it frees up two things. And most people think of it and they go, oh, you free up the time so you can do more. Sure, yes, you free up time, you can do more. But you know the other reason you free up time? So you could do less because you have to prep yourself to be able to give everything you have into the things that you choose to put your focus towards. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about working 24 seven, it's about being effective in the hours that you're actually putting in, yeah. okay? And most people are so guilt ridden and are so, they lack confidence, they're self that they just, they're so afraid of what everybody else will say about that, that they never give themselves the opportunity to actually leverage themselves to their fullest potential mm -hmm. and do more by doing less. Yeah. And so that's what, when you guys see me doing all this stuff online and other, you know, different businesses, different things, whatever, that's why I can focus on them all. It doesn't take away from one or the other. It's because I'm practicing what I'm preaching and I'm telling you to watch what I'm doing, not just what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey guys, this podcast is brought to you by Jared James Enterprises, right? Uh, you know, coaching and training guys. If you're watching this and you need coaching, you need training, you're in the real estate space. If you're a brokerage and you need overall training for your overall company, uh, you're looking to hire someone, any of those types of things, we do it all. Make sure you just check out Jared James today. Dot com really try to stay on the cutting edge of everything um, that's going on in the industry so coaching training you need accountability guys we know that 23% uh, of people 9% of people are going to reach their goals this year 23% are going to stop within a week 43% uh, are going to stop within a month you need to not only know your why you need to understand how you're going to get there and you need accountability to get there so coaching and training jaredjamestoday.com uh, this is also brought to you by Cleared and Closed. Okay, check out clearedandclosed.com, clearedandclosed.com. Uh, we offer transaction management. No matter where you are in the world, we will create a custom uh, um a custom list of, of, of different things that we'll do for you depending on what kind of a state, what kind of a province, what kind of a place you're in, a custom workflow for you. Uh, you'll have your very own transaction coordinator who is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you that you will love them. We're offering to you your first transaction for free. So if you're watching this, you're in real estate, you need to create leverage. You need to build that, that infrastructure that other people want to tell other people about. So we'll give you your first transaction free. Just mention this podcast. Uh, uh, get on that. Do a consult. Go to cleared and closed.com. And last but not least, uh, this podcast is brought to you by First Up with a Y, F-Y-R-S-T-U-P.com. I'm not going to ask to hear that in a sentence or with a verb, uh, but uh, firstup.com, F-Y-R-S-T-U-P.com. If you're watching this and you're a broker or you're an agent and you have a broker, especially right now, low inventory, all the things that are happening, people becoming more mobile, you need to have this at your, uh, in your tool belt. Um, all everything right now about buyer agency and everything else going on. Um, one of the number one ways that you can get someone to sign with you, uh, sign a buyer agency agreement is to provide more value. And what's better than to be able to say that you have a proprietary list of, of listings that nobody else has access to, which is what you have with first up, you know, what first up does is it really digitizes that traditional whiteboard, you know, where all of those listings from the time where you sign them with the seller to the time that they hit the MLS, that time in between you're you're allowed to promote those within the brokerage. And so what if you had a tool within your brokerage where every time those listings were added in that in-between time, it not only notified every agent in your office, but also buyer matched. And it let them know when they have a buyer who matches and, and the listing agent lets them know there's a buyer with another one of the agents in your office that has somebody who matches that. And now you're able to cross promote or uh, 
uh, and talk to each other and potentially sell that property earlier in a completely compliant manner. Okay, uh, so you're talking about you know better communication. You're talking about double-ended deals. You're talking about a lot of things that are going to bring more ROI, return on investment for such a small investment that first up is. Um, if you don't have it, somebody else in your area is going to get it. So F Y R S T U P first up.com. Get on a consult, get that before your area is sold out. Now back to the show. That's great. That's it. Mic drop. Where's the mic drop? So with that being said, (laughs) um, we talked about the, the get healthy stuff and it was so interesting because, um, you know, for anybody who goes to the gym on a regular basis, this is the worst time of the year. Let's be honest. Uh, I, I think I think a lot of those that go consistently consistently absolutely hate. We dread the this first time of the year. Four six weeks in the year. Oh, and look. But for those that are just now getting into it, good for you. If you're going to stick around, I, I love it. Be good there. For you. Yeah. Yeah, and you actually have some stats on that that we shared with our group. Yeah. So, okay. So I'll share that. But I want you to my thought on that, though, look, if you're going to stick around, if you're out there making better yourself, you know that I love that. I want to be clear with absolutely. everybody. You know that I love that. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be part of the 23 percent that don't make it past week one get off my pull-up bar yeah (laughs) just like okay if you're gonna be the one quarter of people who won't even make it past week one can you stop taking up the seat in the sauna Mm -hmm. because i actually live here (laughs) like you know what i mean like this is actually where i i come here on a regular i'll still be here a year from now i'll still be here three years from now Mm -hmm. this is my residence so to say okay now again having said that preface one more time you're out there trying to better yourself. You're going to whatever. Guys, consistency is undefeated, you know? One of the rules that I talked about in those, in those nine rules for 2024, um, I talked about consistency is undefeated. It's just so true, right? Like, I am so much more impressed with somebody um, who three years from now, five years from now, is still running three miles every other day than I am somebody who runs a marathon this year and then stops running for the next year. No matter the commitment it takes for that marathon or not, it's not about the one time. Okay, it's about over and over and over and over and over consistency, guys, like uh, all of the success you will have in this life is found in the mundane crap. It's found in the mundane crap that no one will ever hear about. Nobody cares about and isn't sexy. It is not found in the Instagram worthy moments that we highlight for everybody else to see. Mm -hmm. The success is not found in the Instagram highlights. It's not. It's found in the mundane daily I don't feel like it. Yeah. I'm not ready for this. I feel like crap. Absolutely. I don't like that's where it's found. Like I don't know how many times we have to say that. That is where I mean, it is found. Let's say I mean the past week. I mean actually you've been kicking this sickness. For I don't even know how long. Felt like crap. Still went in. Pushed yourself. Like we're exhausted. And that is that's the consistency that you're really talking. about. Are you talking about, about uh, are you talking about me right now? Yeah. You oh, know. you mean the last couple of months where it's like every I mean, time I, I feel, feel better, I've like I've, for like God months now. It's like every time I get better, something else is hitting. I don't know but, what it is, but I'm still going to the gym. Yeah, I'm still all doing, last yeah. Week, which is probably like you're on um, meds. Like that was probably the worst I've seen you. Like just not feeling. Well. Oh, I was on meds. Yeah, and it was you bad. Were still as consistent as you could be of yep. getting in there and making. Even sure when I couldn't do my not. full thing, it was just like, no, I'm getting in. I'm gonna go sit in the sauna. I'm gonna. I tried to do my. I tried to do my floor routine. I got halfway through. Like, mm-hmm. it's just. It's not an option. You know, um, but anyway, my point in saying that was was that you know uh, we've got this group that's growing and it's really cool and you know whatever. But um, you know, I went into the gym and I was talking to uh, the lady because I had to upgrade my kids' account because now they're getting into working out and yeah. like they're getting swole. It looks great. Um, but I said to her, I said, "Wow, you guys must be crazy." And she goes, "Well, not for the reason you think." She's like, "We were expecting at the new year hundreds of, of signups mm-hmm. at this gym." She said, "How many we had?" I said, how many? What was it, nine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, nine. Yeah. I'm that like, wild. I was like, do you mean like German no? Or do you mean like, what are you talking about, <laughs> nine? She goes, no, nine people, like less than 10. I was like, what are you, what? How's that possible? I used to be a trainer, and I was telling you this. People would line up like crazy. She said in years past, they were lined up Zero out enrollment. the door. Pers- free personal training for the, every, it was a time to make commission and yeah. money. And so it's crazy. So let's talk about why that is. Yeah, why? The article you just sent me. So, like, you see all these articles right now, guys, okay? And you read all about the economy. Mm -hmm. And it's like like they don't think that we're actually operating in this world because you read all these articles. The economy is fantastic. We have low unemployment rates. We have, you know, all this kind of stuff. Like, as if people are not driving around. I was with a friend the other day. This is crazy. Now, this isn't crazy, but it's 
it was just a wake up call for me. He put six gallons of gas in his tank. He wasn't six gallons short of being full. And he was like, I'm, I'm just going to put six gallons in. And I'm like, I'm literally going, like, what is this, some kind of who's on first, whatever? What are you talking about? Six <laughs> gallons of gas. And he's like, well, gas is blank per what? He's like, I don't, I can't. I can't afford to fill up the whole tank. So he goes, I need to do what I can do right now till my next check comes and so that it gets me through. It literally made me want to cry. I was just like, because I remember being there. Like, well, I so remember being our, there. Our waitress yesterday. Well, well I'm going to get to that. So, the same thing. So, so uh, obviously, I fill up his tank because I'm just like, that, that, this dude's too good of a dude to have that kind of stuff happening. Like, yeah. that is bull crap. But I'm sitting here going, we're sitting here saying how great the economy is, how great whatever, and – like, are we all just, like, do they think we're dumb? Like, that that y- y- gas didn't skyrocket, yeah. you know, that, uh, um, you know, look at a restaurant, right? Like, I remember being in the restaurant, and I was joking around. Um, I was in a sushi restaurant, and I know the owner, and I'm just like, uh, she messed up on something. So I was like, it's all right. Next round of drinks is on you, and I was kidding around. And she came over, and she was serious, but she was kidding. And she's like, round of drinks. She goes, Jared, I don't know how we're going to stay in business. She goes, the price of food. She goes, what am I supposed to charge, $30 for California rolls? She's like, customers keep complaining because our prices are going up. But she goes, they haven't gone up enough. She's like, we're just passing on yeah. to them like what, you know. Like she's like, I can't afford this. I can't keep up with this. And it's this crazy thing where it's like you keep hearing about the economy being good and low unemployment rate and whatever. And I'm like, guys, you got to understand the difference between unemployment rate and underemployment. I know. Which so when article when when someone gets about. a three percent raise, but yeah. but 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 the uh, but inflation went up seven and a half percent, they lost four and a half percent. You know, so it's like, oh, I got a raise, but you know, the gas went through the freaking roof. Food went through the freaking like every. You go to the grocery store, and you got people who are walking up and then taking things away at the counter. Yeah. And I'm like, this is just like. So you have that mindset as a consumer, but then you start thinking. The other side of, like, you're a business owner. Oh, I have a story. You have employees that are like, hey, I can't afford to live off what I'm getting paid on an yeah. average salary yeah. or average. I mean, that's also a, a scary position because you, you you understand it. Like, how do you – you're Why do you think McDonald's right? and Home Depot and all these places keep doing self-checkouts and everything? You're paying high school kids $15, 16 yeah. an hour. High school. Like, do, do you which know is, what – Which McDonald's is going up to 20. Whew. Which is, it's so they're wild. just going to keep on but, creating creating uh, uh, systems where they don't have to pay people because that you can't run a business like that. Like, I, I don't want to tell you what I made when I was in high school, um, but like I remember my son doing work over the summer and what he's making per hour. He was thrilled. He would have taken way less, but he's like he's yeah. like that's what they're giving that's me. That's why his goal this year is to oh. save ten grand. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's back then. But you're right. Like well, I started off making five seventy five. I remember making it up to five seventy five. Seventy five, and gas was ninety nine cents then. Yeah, eighty nine, ninety nine cents. Yeah, yeah. It was so different. Do you know a crazy story? Tom doesn't even know this story, um, but Tom, I had somebody uh, come to me, a worker, like one of our employees, who came to me and wanted to raise, but not only raise, but wanted to raise according to inflation, and went through all these different things and whatever. And on one, and I, I'm so torn mm-hmm. because on one hand, I'm looking at it, and I'm going. You're not wrong in the sense that you're right, we're giving you a raise, but you're still making less than what you did in previous years, which is not my fault. Like, I don't control inflation. I don't control whatever. And so I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, on one hand, I didn't, I wasn't angry at them for bringing it to me because I'm like, you're not wrong. Like, you're just trying to make money. You're just trying to whatever. But then on the other hand, I'm thinking to myself, if a business did that and just raised everybody according to to gas going through the roof and everything else – we go out of business. Yeah, you absolutely. don't even have a job. Like there's not even you. You're not even going to be underemployed anymore. You're just going to be unemployed, mm-hmm. you know. And it's 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 a crazy time because you read all this stuff right now. And um, you know, it's funny because everybody's like, well, then how how does it last? How are we doing this? And I'm like, it doesn't last. You know, when that housing crisis happened, oh five, oh six, oh oh seven, oh eight. You know, whatever. Like. Anybody with a brain could see that coming. You know, you, you were giving out million-dollar loans, no-doc loans to people with 550 credit scores who get 500 points just for signing their name right. And, you know, like a yeah. friend you wouldn't give $20 to, but they're the bank's qualified. giving them a million dollars. Oh, who knew? Mm-hmm. They've never paid a bill in their life, but now they're going to pay for their home. Mm-hmm. So now you take today's world, and it's like I feel like we're just ignoring the inevitable of you come through COVID, you shut everything down, uh, businesses can't operate. 
they make up for it by the government printing money and throwing hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars at business owners and going, here you go, you can make it, you can make it, you can make it. They start doing subsidies and monies for individuals, credits and everything. You can make it, you can make it. Those are one time. Hmm. So when the actual problem doesn't get solved and you're still inflation through the roof and, and all underemployment and everything else, and now those checks are no longer coming in, what happens now? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what happens now. We just stopped at the liquor store. It's your birthday. We we're stopping in to grab something for tonight for our friends coming over. And what happened? The truck was backed up. They were pulling the liquor out of the store. And he goes, we're closed. It's middle of the day. I said, you're closed for today? Because it didn't feel like that. And he goes, no, we're closed for good. He's like, we tried as much as we could. We can't make it anymore. And what did you notice when you looked down that hole? Oh, I literally pointed out. Like, look at and by the way, shirt. that's a flourishing area. Every single one was like there was at least three or four that were closing the strip. Yep, sign was taken down. This because what's happening? Yeah, the the piper's coming to pay now. You're not getting the subsidies from the government anymore. You're not. You're having to operate in the actual economy I mean, we walked, that we're living in. We walked to the mall yesterday. Oh my god! And we're looking at this, and there. First of all, we we felt like we were walkers. I'm like, no one's in there. Yeah. Stores are closed. Stores I think are, I told you I rented are, it out just for you for your birthday, <laughs> <laughs> to be stores honest. Stores weren't even opening. Like, and I, you, you used to work in a mall. I used to work in a mall. Yeah. Um, I, a lot of my AT&T stores were there. It's crazy. My Apple st- you open up at a certain time, and if you don't, you're fine. The yeah. mall will find you. They were not opening. They're closing Closing soon for good. Closing like good. Yeah. Places like, just like, walled what? up, like nobody there, on. nobody. And what happens is, again, guys, you listen to maybe, these maybe stats. More e-commerce. You, you look at these, well, I was going to say, you look at these stats and they go yeah. unemployment or they go, look at so and so had record sales, Black Friday sales. Mm-hmm. Hey, look at whatever. Mm-hmm. What they're not paying attention to is two things. Number one, everybody was getting all this government money which they didn't go save, they didn't, they pumped it into the economy, which yeah. was, you know, b- but again, mm-hmm. once that's gone, they what do you do? Right away. People are building up their credit cards because we become such a consumer society. Gifts, let's go back to gifts. You and I saying, I don't need a gift, we have everything I need. But we have become such a society, you know, where we have created every other week, it's a new gift giving opportunity. Mm-hmm. Every week, it's an opportunity to get in trouble. Every week, it's an opportunity to go into debt. Every week. And if you don't, how did you not get me anything? You don't love me? And we've created this, this, this equivalence between if you don't follow this consumerism, you obviously don't love me. Yeah. You know, so-and-so bought his girl, you know, this. Why did they, you know, and all of a sudden, it becomes this big, like, comparing, you know, whatever. And people are just driving up their credit card debt in order to keep up with the Joneses or to keep up with what everybody's supposed to look like or keep up with, and then you met, and then you put in like the social world where everybody's got to look perfect You're all the so time. Yeah, and you know how that, you know how this drives right? me nuts, right? Oh, totally. Like you, you know that um, it's like everybody and their mom wants to be an influencer now. And part of being an influencer is that everything has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Everything always has to be perfect and everything has to be, you know, you have to set up and stage and you have to this and you have to that and you have to, you know, whatever. And you, you buy followers and you buy likes and you, you have bots that come and give you views and give you – and I'm just like, God, God. Like it's almost like when people say, call me a real estate coach. I'm like, oh, don't call me a coach because like everyone, everyone in the world who can't sell real estate is a coach. <laughs> and now it's like when you see your friends or like we'll see people, they're like, oh, you're an influencer. And I'm like, oh, don't call me an influencer because I – because it's just that well, idea we got of – that yesterday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's like, – yeah, oh and you're just going – yeah, because now I associate it with those people, you know. But my point is, in all of this, is that, you know, there's a reckoning coming. Yeah. You can't just keep building up credit card debt and paying. Things can't cost 30% more than they used to cost a year ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like they, you know, they'll say, oh, inflation went up 7.5%. Where's the 7.5? Because, like, when I go buy, like, groceries, it's like 30% more. It's not seven and a half. So I don't know how we're calculating this number. Did gas go up seven and a half percent? <laughs> Anyone tell me did gas go up seven and a half percent? Because I think we'd be fine with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was like 75 percent or more. And it's just, I don't know. I just have this thing lately. I feel like I'm rambling now. But I just have this thing lately where like I just have such a heart for like, I just feel for people. Mm-hmm. You know, it sucks because it's like the better people do. They're just doing better just to stay where they are. I know. Or to not fall off. And it's like, um, and everybody makes it political. It's like, well, then you must be this. Or you must, no, I just care about people. I don't care who's in office. I don't care who the person is, who gets credit, who, like, 
our whole world's become so tribal on everything that you can't just look at something, have common sense, and go, yeah, that's dumb. Well, then you must, what are you, a trumper? And it's like, the hell are you talking about? Am I a trumper? Like I'm, no, it's logic. I'm just like, saying, no. <laughs> I'm just saying people can't afford things. Yeah. You know, I'm saying there's underemployment right now, yeah. you know, like duh, they, that's it. So anyway, it's, I think, I think it's, I think a reckoning is coming. Um, and I'm worried about it, uh, from an economic standpoint. Okay. So kind of shifting topics, we're talking about that inflation. What's the relationship with that and us now seeing um, mortgage rates drop. <sighs> Is there any type of connection there? It's perspective. Mm-hmm. So, like, people now are seeing 6%, 6.5%. Some people are seeing the fives. Guys, that's what it was when I sold real estate. Oh, it was? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, but when you come from 2.875, 6% looks terrible. But when you come from 8%, how does 6 look? I know. I'm back. I mean, like... T- yeah. I remember seeing my parents sitting at their dining table. I was in high school, possibly maybe grade school, junior high. No, probably high school. And I remember them looking at 12, 13%. It's, it's. And I'm like, whoa, that 6% looks a lot better now, right? It's, but look, I mean, look, if you're going to sell your house and your house is worth uh, 200 grand and um, somebody offers you 150, you're like, get the heck out of here. I'm not, I'm not selling my house for 150. If you lose your job, are unable to work, you go pre foreclosure. You're in month five, mm-hmm. and the bank is going to foreclose tomorrow. You owe nothing on it, and now someone comes and offers you one ten. Close tomorrow. How quickly are you jumping? Oh, uh, perspective. Real quick. Yeah. Because the situation changed, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I look at what's going on with rates, they're saying they're hopefully going to go down even more. Um, my hope and what I think is going to happen is that. You know, we had that whole conversation about when things were at 3% and then went to 7%, and they're like, no one's going to sell their house. Why would they sell their house they had for three and then go to a house for seven, right? But those people whose motivation changes and their life changes and all those things change, when they go to six and they go to five and a half, are now going to look at the difference between that three and that five and a half compared to when three and seven. They're like, I'm not doing three and seven, but now three and five and a half is going to look okay. Because it's like, well, we want to move no matter what. And it's not seven anymore, so let's get in now because yeah. the situation changed. Well, then you have people who are like, oh, it's dropping. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And it's dropping. Good luck with that. Oh I did a God. thing on that the other day. I they're mean, like, it, they're it, like, when's, when's the right those- time to buy? Uh, it's like, first off, the, the answer to that question. So I actually did a reel on this on Instagram. Someone said, um, is it a good time to buy? And I think one of the biggest mistakes you make, it's like debate 101, is answering the questions that are in front of you. <laughs> you know, it's like politically, that's how you get people in trouble. Like when you, if you watch a debate stage when, when, uh, when all these presidential debates are going on, the person who wins is not actually the winner or the person who's the best. It's, it's watch what will happen. They'll gang up on people and they'll make them answer questions that they don't want to answer. Mm-hmm. And just because they're answering them, they'll look bad. So, so uh, they did this with Trump and they'd say, do you denounce white supremacy? And he's like, how many freaking times do I, why are you asking me that? You know, and it's like, but now I'm talking about white supremacy, so how do I look, you know? Yeah. And so what they'll do, and this is a political, this is what you do, guys. It's just, it's not, this isn't political. It's just what politicians do. Yeah. They all get together and they say, let's ask questions that makes them answer that, you know? So if someone says, comes to me and says, uh, you know, hey, once and for all, do you denounce pedophilia? Now I'm on now I'm on record going I am anti Peter and they're like why is he talking about that and now they associate you with that and now you're terrible they're like I don't even know why but I just gonna, I'm going to stay away from that who's even talking about that that's you know whatever right so one of the mistakes you make is answering the questions people ask you that's debate 101 right so when people say things like is it a good is time it the, to buy? is it a good time to buy well here's my answer to that is it ever a bad time to own mm. I'm going right back ever yeah. a bad time to own And they're like, well, shoot, you know? And it's like, look, there's never been a 10-year period in the history of the market where it's gone down. So so is it a right time for you? Well, what's your goal? You know, buying and selling real estate is not penny stocks. So if you're you're the person, like you just said, that goes, well, rates are going to go down. Oh, so now we're short-term buyers? Mm -hmm. So now you're buying for the next four months. Because that's not real estate. That's stocks. That's crypto. So if you're making long-term decisions based on short-term return you're in the wrong industry yeah so if oh the rates might go this and the next the rates might wrong industry okay 
is it the right time to buy? It's never the wrong time to own if you're an actual buyer. And a buyer of real estate is long term. A buyer of real estate is not six months. A buyer of real estate is not eight months. It's never the wrong time to own. That's the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when you understand those kinds of things, you know, it, it's a different level of intelligence. Like you don't let people bosh you in like that. But as agents right now, people need to get smart because, you know, look, they just showed that uh, next year there's going to be 4.71 million sales, a 20% yeah. increase, you know, and uh, which means there's going to be plenty of transactions. Now there's going to be plenty of competition too. Mm -hmm. um, but what separates competition? What have I been saying for the last two years? Pros versus amateurs. You know, do you know how to answer people are you just giving the same nonsensical bull crap that you learn from some coach online you know is it a good time to buy well yes it is is it a good time to sell well yes it is well it's always a good thing because it's in my best interest mm -hmm. you know yeah. and great salespeople don't do things that are in their best interest great salespeople think about the lifetime value of the person in front of them and they do things that are in the best interest of the person they're dealing with mm -hmm. that's how they win long term because again, we're not in this for the next four months, five months, six months, 10 months. You know, we're in this for forever. Yeah. And when you have that mentality and you're up against a bunch of sprinters, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's like I used to tell my son, we went, we went and ran a 5K once and all these kids that were with him went sprinting ahead. And I said, you don't win a 5K in the first mile, but you can lose it in the first mile, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. You don't win a 5K in the first mile, but by God, you can lose it in the first mile. And what, what an example to show him when I said that, and then they all sprinted by us in the next half mile, they were all walking. Because what did they do? They lost it in the first mile. Yeah. Okay, they so understand, exhausted. marathon. Yeah. yeah, we're in the game of business, this is a marathon. It's you know? gonna be interesting, you know, because, um, yeah. You know, with rates dropping, you're gonna have more property, more inventory, I would think. Yeah, there's right? absolutely gonna be more right? inventory. So is, there, is our prices going to now go up? Are sellers gonna be a little more greedy now? You know, rates are dropping, more inventory. Supply and demand. Not, People get upset, it, 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 but it's, it's supply wild. and demand. You're right. It's wild. It's like, People okay. go, it can't keep continuing. It can't. Why? Because you're emotional? Mm -hmm. Supply and demand. I know. If somebody's willing to pay it, oh, it's going to happen. And I do, think, I do think there's inventory also coming from, you know, look, when you look at things like vacation rentals, right? And you look at, um, they were the hottest thing. I mean, you wanted to buy a bunch of them, right? Like, you Which know, I still, that is my, on my bucket list of like having a hey. couple. Hey, you know, I would love to. My buddy created that company, Air DNA. You know, where they go yeah. on and they do. You know, we're vacationing together at the oh, end. We of just month. talked about. Yeah. You just talked about investment property and where to invest. Let's get to that. Let's get to that in a second. I do so want to talk about that. Talk about but that. my point is, is that you know, when when everybody was first getting into the craze and it was new and you had vacation rentals, supply and demand again. Absolutely. So what would happen is, is that you know, my buddy's company that started that company, Air DNA, which is the one everybody uses for vacation rentals to figure out like you know how much rent will it get, what 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 are you forecasting that yeah. this will have, how how occupant, how many, what percent of occupancy will it have, all that stuff. Um, you you were making those decisions back when it was the hot thing to do and people were thinking about doing it, but there was less competition. So in that given area, there was four potential uh, uh, vacation rentals, mm -hmm. Airbnbs or VRBOs or whatever they happen to be. Yeah. Then it became the hot thing and the industry changed. And it's like, no, this is what you do now. This is what everyone does, mm -hmm. which is great and it can work. But the problem is now is that those numbers you were working off forecasting when there were four rentals, now there's 40 in the same area. And you know what happens with supply and demand when now there's 40 instead of four? But it's not even that, too, though, babe. Like you have also the government dictating, hey, we are no longer Correct. going to allow Correct. which is only squeezing them into in the city of Dallas yep. to be Airbnb. Yep, which is squeezing them into a right. smaller area, which means yeah. even more competition. So now I've invested in a home that yep. I've been doing Airbnb, yep. but now all of a sudden you're saying, what? So what's going to happen inventory-wise when that happens, right? So yeah. so all of a sudden now you're going to get these people who aren't getting the return they expected because there's more competition, which drives the price down. You're going to get people who bought them for that reason, but now the government passes some law that says you can't do it for what but you bought it for. A lot of the reasons of that, too, is – and you actually – Okay, I'm going to say this. We haven't talked about it, but you've experienced this with the advance. People are not doing room blocks anymore. No. They're doing Airbnbs. No. It's cooler. It has a pool. More yeah. people can fit. Like, and so it's hurting. They're competing. Hurting. They're not competing with the hotels. Absolutely. What do and we, so I mean, now, what, please, what do we do? We, when we go to Scottsdale, every once in a while we'll stay at the W or stay at a cool hotel, whatever. But what's the first place we look? And we always Vacation rental. Like, let's rental. get a baller place. I mean, same thing with Turo. We, babe, we'll never babe, what did I just get? I just got, uh, we're renting a car from when we were to Orlando for my son's soccer tournament. We don't we don't go on like if I'm on the road and I just need to get off the airport and just like, you know, use my little national rent a car, get a car, whatever, I'll do it real quick because it's easy. We go to Orlando, 
I'm getting a BMW M3 competition for like almost the same price that I would get a Toyota Corolla at yeah. Enterprise. Yeah. You know, so it's like vacation it's, car rental. And so it's, like, it, it, but it won't be a surprise when they start like, oh, you can no longer pick up, pick up at an airport. Oh, you know that stuff. You know that stuff drives. You, you know that stuff drives me. Really no, I hate it when government gets in the way of innovation. What, taxi services, and now yeah. it's hurting Uber. The services, unions get involved, and now and they so start. Yeah, we're starting to see this, and like there's articles like the Dallas one. That's what happened with taxi one. and Uber. There's like it's it's happening, and so. Um, but you're right. I think it's gonna. It's like who are you to tell me as a tour. private citizen I can't rent my house house out like I want to rent it out? Who are you? That's the stuff where, like, you know, it drives me nuts my, when the government gets involved in private enterprise. And I'm like, okay, so you've never done anything with your life, but you're enough of a scumbag that you won an election in this city. You know, you had enough people paid off. You had enough, you know, whatever. And now you're making rules for how these actual people who do something with their life and actually affect the economy, actually employ people, actually mm-hmm. – you're going to start now determining – what they can and can't yeah. do that drives me insane. I know my my parents just bought a cabin. Yeah, and it's in an HOA community, and they said the same exact thing. You cannot use your cabin as a vacation rental on Airbnb, VRBO, and so and I asked the listing agent, well, let's say I post it on my social account, and a friend of mine or so and so, she's like, well, that's fine because we really can't we yeah. can't monitor that. Yeah. But these other ones, you cannot. But look, just you like know, I talked about like the economy, you, you day of reckoning is coming. It's, like all of these, all of these government bureaucracies can try to, they can try to regulate everything that happens. Yeah. At the end of the day, private's going to win. Like that's how it's going. to – It's just like I said, just what happened with the taxi unions and Uber. You know, mm-hmm. if people want it, it's what's going to happen because all of those people are going to vote you out. Exactly. And they're going to go, okay, so you're stymieing any competition, you're stymieing any innovation, you're mm-hmm. stymieing any whatever. You need to go. You're not yeah. a force for good anymore. Like, you're literally just following. You're getting your marching orders. You're a little puppet, you know, getting puppeteered by whoever's giving you money from whatever you're doing. You're, you're, you're killing innovation, which is what has to – innovation is what keeps well, there, us there ahead. Is, it's calling us disruptors. We're it, disrupting this, doing that. I mean, you know what? But that, That's how that – What was America? Well, I know. It was the original it's, disruptor. Like, it's, it's just, it's just like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is how we stay ahead. Yeah. You know, this is how we grow. This is how we, it's how we screw up. It's how we fail forward. This is how we, we have to, you can't just hold on to what used to be, you know, I'm going to, you know, whatever. You've got to actually, you know, try things and let people innovate and let them screw up. You can't, you can't regulate everything, you know, so that there's no problem. There's no mess up. There's no whatever. Like we don't learn to walk without hitting our head on the coffee table, Mm -hmm. without falling over and get, we don't learn to walk, you know? And so when you take that same mentality from a business perspective, from an innovation perspective, we have to be able to fall. We have to be able to screw up. We have to be able to go, well, that didn't work, and let everybody else see it. That didn't work. Now we need to, you know, and, and that's kind of how I look at, you know, our, our, our environment, our climate right now, um, is that I am, uh, when you look at these places, you know, I, I know where I am from an innovation standpoint, but we also need to look at it from the perspective of the industry and say, that's going to create some inventory, mm-hmm. you know, because um, yeah. a lot of people got in because it was cool and there was, short TikToks on it and made it look really cool. And then you got in and all those numbers that you were working off of, it's not the climate we're operating in now, Yeah, you know, and that's going to be a different thing. Um, and I, I honestly wasn't into, you know, the, the longer term rentals too much other than I just saw my buddy, um, uh, John Mangus posted that one of the hottest places to buy right now is places like Toledo, you know, Toledo, Ohio. And, um, which they have renovated their whole downtown. I mean, I am, I am like, beautiful. I want apartment buildings, right? But I don't want them here mm-hmm. where everything's so regulated, so taxed. So like you just, you don't buy those kind of places here and they're overpriced or whatever. So I start looking in Toledo and I see these places, you know, 40 something, 80 something units, completely affordable. I'm like, maybe I need to buy out of state. I'm seriously Everyone listening to this and now I'm going to go to Toledo. <laughs> hey, you're welcome guys. I want my fee. Okay. I want my fee. Okay. No, uh, John Mangus. I've always wanted to, as they call him, I would always, I always wanted to have like owned so many doors. My, my father does that. Um, oh, my, one of my best friends, Jeff is it, like, he runs, yes, that's what he does for a living is he, he trains people. He does it himself. He does I, our other, our other best friends that we're going out with tonight. Jim owns a bunch of doors, owns honestly, commercials. I would love to do that also for a selfish reason, because like, I want a place in Dallas, downtown, a loft, 
but it's because it's a direct flight from Fresno. We can meet up. We can hang. Like, I want places. I want to rent when I go. I want to rent. I don't want to own when I do that. But anyway. Whatever. (laughs) <laughs> People are like, hey, you Jared, can, you live next to the ocean. Why don't you buy on the ocean? I'm like, because I don't want to every time there's a storm be worrying about my you house could, getting down. You like, rent my Airbnb if you oh, like. Oh, <laughs> or now it's yours and mine. We're doing that right now. Okay, all right. Okay, um, girl, okay. No, but um, places that we would go visit. That's what I would want. To I like to rent in those places. This is like a conversation we should literally have on another podcast because people, I think, wouldn't. Want to share this? I think that they would. I think that they would be surprised at my. I'm all for ownership and everything else, but in those kinds of things, someone's got to own it. I want to rent it. Like when it comes to places with like high, like when hurricanes come through and like whatever. I've just I've lived through. I'm in the north. I remember Sandy, Hurricane Sandy, where we were vacation in LBI. I've seen people in Milford, where our offices are, uh, were like on the beach. We have five different public beaches there. Every time they rebuilt their house, another hurricane came through and knocked it down the moment they were about to move back in. And I'm like, you know what? I'll pay a premium in rent when I'm there, and I'm not. I'm not taking on those headaches. Like that. That is honestly how I look at it. It's it's. Uh, there's other places where I'd consider. I mean, I don't think there's hurricanes going through Dallas, but, <laughs> but they, no, but they have other they have other yes, they other do. things, you know. Yeah. But uh, either way, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but I'm own all Cowboys. year. What's that? They have the Cowboys. Yeah. I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean that they underperform in the playoffs? What do you mean? Mm. That's just a that's a that's a deal. I really don't for know. Me. Although <laughs> I, my, I think I'm doing well in my thing, right? What thing? The football thing. That, that thing. ended. <laughs> well, that's that's over. <laughs> <laughs> You're no, talking I about the fantasy was. football yeah, thing. I think I was. And you told me here. I was doing well. I think, I think you lost in the finals. Oh. You know what? I don't even want to talk about it because it's all a sham. Okay, Chris and I dominated all year long, and then I lose in the opening round because my guys have a bad day. And then the rest of the rounds after, after I'm already eliminated in the playoffs, after I'd won 11 straight or whatever it was, I dominate every round. But it just so happens in the opening round, my guys had a bad day. Aww. So I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Okay. I did good. Okay, I think Andrea won. <laughs> Andrea won and had a sub 500 record. Yep. What that the crap? That happened to me last year. Aren't you the commissioner? Yeah. Can't you do something about this? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. I went three and eleven. <laughs> you went three and eleven? Yes, I did. God. I don't know how that happened. You're disgraced to men everywhere. I understand. Okay. <laughs> You're not gonna make it to year six. I'm sorry. I yeah. can't have the commissioner of our league going three and eleven. Okay, it's an embarrassment. <laughs> No. The commissioner also has head coaches on a roster. It's ridiculous. That's awesome. It's so ridiculous. Anyway, um, we've covered a lot. Is there anything else we want to cover? Because I, I feel like we've – honestly, we've covered stuff we weren't planning on covering. But I feel um, like that's good. Like uh, yeah, we went no, into some areas – we went into some areas that were uh, not planned to go into, but I think it's good for people to hear us talk about. Um, I do think I'm going to do another podcast. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, do a podcast on the nine rules for 2024. Maybe do a podcast where we talk about our feelings on buying versus renting in those situations. Yeah. That could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, got some other ideas too. I like the setup. Guys, let us know. Do you like the setup here? It's a little bit brighter. A little different, yeah. A little brighter. Uh, this is the color of your skin in my book. I don't know if everybody <laughs> knows that, but <laughs> this is just so everyone knows. I think it is. <laughs> I painted these walls the color of Linda in my oh. book. That is uh, the color of me right th- there. That, that is the and, color of oh, you. It's, so it's the lightest, whitest thing, and it's got the same hairstyle, yeah, uh, interestingly enough. Um, no, I think we did cover a lot. There's there's a lot of stuff that are on our list of things to talk about, but I would love to get feedback from people going into the year, you know, like what are your focuses, what are, what, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, you're kicking off the, the year in a couple of weeks going to California, and you're talking about pros versus amateurs. Boy, there. that's a whole other conversation. And, yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. Oh, you know what? There's I want to talk about that real quick. But what? I want to talk about that. About what? Um, I've taken a bit of a break. I'm doing less events this year. Um, I know we've said that many times, but, like, I'm actually doing it. Like, um, I just accepted to go to Portugal and whatever, uh, but it was on the border. I wasn't doing it. We actually said no, like, four or five times and then kept coming back, and now we're going to do it. But um, I am really searching right now. I'm going to bare my soul to all of you. Like, I am searching right now because – Every event that reaches out to me, they all want me to talk about the same things. They all want me to talk about buyer agency. This is something we got to talk about on a future podcast, but like buyer agency. Um, they all want me to talk about AI. They all want me to talk about, and I can. 
it's just the wrong focus. Mm -hmm. Like, well, it's buyer like agency, like, again, buyer agency is not a, it's not a keynote. Like, I can cover that in 15 seconds. It's, you know, look, yes, everyone needs to get serious about buyer agency. Everybody needs to understand what their value is. Everybody needs to know how to communicate that value. They should have been doing that all along, by the way. Like, that's, that's a message for the amateur. We should have already been doing that. We need to understand that. We need to, obviously, they're buying and selling the largest house they're ever going to, largest asset they're ever going to own. So we should have a contractual agreement, no doubt about it. We need to know how to, how to communicate that to them, no doubt about it. Um, but we also need to remember that we live a bit in a bubble where like everything that we're hearing about on a regular basis, all of these new lawsuits and bombshell this and Zillow suing the MLSs and all of that, we need to understand that we also a little bit live in a bubble where our consumers do not live in that world. Yeah. And every time we talk about it like crazy and every time we start off the conversation, what we did was just introduce a new uh, argument. We introduced uh, a, a new... Um, uh, uh, what do you call it that we have to overcome? A new objection that we have to overcome. It's okay? just a red flag for that. Like, what? That's what's it. They're like, on? what do you mean? What's what you yeah. Like, guys, all of this stuff that's happened, all of these bombshell lawsuits and all these whatever, like, as of right now, have changed zero. Mm -hmm. Not a little. Not, they've changed nothing. I think, no, and I, I, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I think those that are so concerned still and asking you to speak about them are either not educating their agents enough on it or their agents aren't really in, in investing enough education themselves into their local MLS, their state MLS, their like their business themselves, the form setting the forms. Yeah. Like all of that like you said is something that you should be doing and you should know before going out and getting a list. Yeah, I think that's it. They don't they don't know what to and, yeah. And I think um anyways, it's just they don't know what to yeah. sell them. So like, Jared, you come tell them, right? And and my message is probably not what your message is. And because my message is you need to understand it. You need to educate yourself. You need to, but you need to go back to doing your business. Because, you know, when, when everything changes and if everything changes, which that's not a certainty, it is a certainty that everything will change over time. But at the extreme that everybody's talking, um, if and when that happens, right? It means that it happens for everyone, and so I'm going to go back to the things I've said over and over and over over the years. We're all playing on the same chessboard. So if those rules change, it means they change for everyone. So if you're better, you still win. And so when that happens, we make adjustments. We learn. We educate ourselves. We do those things. Um, do you really but think the focus, it's for everyone? The, the focus, yeah. If the rules change, they change for everyone. No, I mean, meaning if, if an independent broker pulls out of, you know, paying for the realtor trademark. Okay. It doesn't necessarily affect everyone. It affects how's the consumer. Broker. How's the consumer? Do I need? Do I? It doesn't affect the consumer. Are you talking about the consumer and themselves? What's that matter to the consumer? Do you think consumers going? Do you have a? No, no, do you have I don't a think it affects trademark the consumer at all? No. That, that's my point. Okay, I didn't know if you're talking about consumer. or You're talking about that's like what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. It's like it's like great. Now we can have internal discussions within the industry whether that's a good thing, a bad thing. The amount of lobbying that is done by places like NAR right. and all right. of that. We can have all yeah. of those conversations. But from your work to a consumer, it means absolutely. When you are yeah. spending all of this time, teach us about this and teach us about that. Da, 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 it's just like, go get a listing. Eight, go get a listing. Solves all problems. <laughs> okay, go get all the listings. Solves all the problems. If there are major fundamental changes within our industry that actually change the way we have to do business, it'll change for everybody, and we'll adjust like we've always done. They didn't do business the same 100 years ago in any industry. We didn't do the yeah, – yeah. like, we'll all adjust. It's not the end of the world. Like, like everybody is just – it's the newest thing to freak out about. It's the newest thing to pay full attention to. And when we put all of our attention towards those things, you know what we're not putting our attention to it? Winning in our area. You know what's crazy? I think those that, that adjust the most are those that are just the past, like, two, three years that have been into it, that jumped in on a COVID year, surpassed that, made it through number year two – Year three, they've adjusted the most in the past. It's like guys, you came through a financial crisis, you came through like, COVID. You can, I think you can get through crazy. getting a buyer agency signed. Which is crazy though, because like the pros that have been around and been doing it for years and yeah. years and years are yeah. probably are the hardest ones to adjust to. Yeah. What's happening versus those that have just oh one hundred one hundred percent dove into it three four years ago. But they will if they have to. They will, you know. And so it's just like again, there's just all this focus on like. Uh, things that, you know, look, they're important, but they're not as important as everybody's making them sound. And they're certainly not important in place of go get a listing. You know, like that's what's going to pay your bills. That's what's going to allow you to focus on these other things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, but we don't want to use them as excuses for why we're not.
because yeah. at the end of the day, things have not changed that much right now. Like they really have not. Okay. And so like everybody wants me to focus on that. And I'm like, well, that's a boring keynote. <laughs> We're going to come in and talk about buyer agency. You know what I mean? You know, when, and then when the dad gets involved and they get angry, you're going to like, what, what do we like? There are fundamentals that we need to make sure we keep strong and that we understand. We need to understand how to grow a business, how to build a business, how to leverage ourselves, how to, like, we need to understand these things, you know? And so, uh, I'm in like a real like soul searching right now where a lot of places are reaching out and they'd be like, talk about this, talk about that. And I'm like, huh, no. You know, it'll probably come up in my, because it's part of, it's not the headline. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand the difference between the headline and a sentence in the paragraph. Mm -hmm. You know, those are two different things. And, you know, it's like wisdom, right? Like they used to say in the church, a prophet cries when others laugh and laugh when others cry. I feel like a prophet in the industry right now. Where like everybody is going crazy and going, you know, whatever. It's like like Warren Buffett, get greedy when everyone else is hungry, get hungry when everybody else is greedy. It's just like I feel like that right now. Like I literally feel like I'm sitting back and watching everybody lose their collective minds. And I'm going, what? What are we doing right now? Mm -hmm. Get it together, guys. Get it together. Like the adults, like I always say, every room needs an adult in it right now. When everybody goes crazy, make sure you don't. Yeah. And those are all great Instagram taglines, but when you actually go through something where everybody goes crazy, guess what the majority of people do? All who repost my quote, mm -hmm. they go crazy. And so that's how easy it is to win, is that you're able to sit back and kind of, you know, wisdom takes over and goes, hey, we're going to adjust like we need to adjust. We're going to pay attention to what's happening. We're going to update our consumer when that needs yeah. to happen. We're going to create content like we need to whatever. But hey, while you're all losing your minds and going crazy and saying how this is the next thing and, you know, AI is it and all this other kind of stuff, I'm going to go get a listing. <laughs> like, I'm going to go get in front of a seller, you know, and then we can argue about AI and all this stuff, okay? And, and look, will AI be a thing? Abs AI is already a thing. I'm not saying that. We taught AI at the advance. Don't okay. misunderstand yeah. what I'm saying, okay? It's already a thing, okay? But the idea that it is on the equivalent level to these other foundations of our business is just like, <laughs> what, what are we doing here, guys? Like, what, what are we doing, okay? So that's all I'm saying, you know, and I know people yeah. are gonna think that I'm crazy and you know, whatever, great. I'll just keep going about running businesses and I mean, you jump with your next, whatever, just, whatever the next trending topic is, you go make all your topics about it. And then six months from now with the next trending topics, go, go change all of your keynotes. And then six months from now, when the next trending topics come out, you know, at some point somebody has to, somebody has to, enlarge the film so to say you know zoom out a little bit and go huh wait a second now everybody relax and that's kind of how I view it I feel like I'm looking at everything right now and I've zoomed out the film and I'm watching from above and just kind of going uh what are we doing here guys what are we doing you know um and I'm like trapped in this like yeah. you know like weird place of like I don't I'm not trying to down anybody and I'm not trying to but like I say to you many times I'm like I see it clear as day you know, and that's a blessing and a curse uh, because it seems like you're always against the tide. Like you're always, you know, and that's a blessing and a curse, mm -hmm. you know. Um, anyway, that's what you get with podcast stuff, guys. Uh, yeah. That's where I'm at right now. Say no to a lot of things. Say no to a lot of things right now. You know that. You know that. Yeah. I've been home a long time. Which is, yeah. Long time. The event I do at the end of January is going to be the first event I've done in months. Which I'm excited about that. It's one of our partners with, um, I mean, one of your yeah. coaching yeah. Um, brokerages, but yeah. also with First Stop. and Just been home. Um, it'll be fun. Home, creating content, thinking, running companies. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back out. But, I'm, you know, right now I'm just I'm pondering everything and just kind of uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have any interest in going out like a dancing monkey, you know. Yeah. All right, now play, you know. And it's just like, you know, you know I want to speak wisdom to what's actually going on, you know. And that doesn't happen when – you know, we were too busy to be productive, right? That doesn't yeah. happen when, you know, you're in so much noise that you can't figure out what your sound it's is. That, it's that analogy of the machine gun versus... Yeah, that's exactly it. The sniper. That's exactly it, you know? And mm -hmm. so, uh, like I said, I think sometimes we're surrounded by so much noise, we don't know what yeah. sound we make anymore. And it's crazy. Sometimes we're the ones that are making all the noise. Yeah. You or know, we just take like on we take on the noise. Yeah. You know, it's like if everybody... If you were walking down the street and everybody started running back the opposite direction of you, screaming, you'd run that direction and scream. 
And you mentioned you don't that. even know why. You mentioned like say, you saying no means saying yes to something else. That's absolutely. You right? said to me the other day that you can't keep saying no. You I'm said like, you were like, stop saying no, saying no to everything. No. I'm like, babe, every time I say no to something, I'm saying yes to something else. Yeah. And every time I say yes to something, I'm saying no to something else. You have to understand that. No's are not no's on their own. Yeses are not yeses on their own. Mm -hmm. They have wide ranging effects that come from them. And everybody has to understand this in their business, in their life. Every time you say no to something, you are equally at that time saying yes, at the opposing view, to something else. Yeah. And if I say yes to something, that other thing that might have been just as important or more important, I have to understand the consequences of that yes. Mm -hmm. Because every yes is a no to something yeah. else. So you have to understand the power of your words in that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's end the podcast. Happy birthday, baby. Thank you. Looking amazing. Thank you. Beautiful woman in the world. Appreciate Tom, that. happy five year. Thank you. Most Thank beautiful you. man That's right. in the world. Applause. <laughs> applause that. For sure. All right. <laughs> I love you both, but I love you in a different way. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us a review. Let us know if you enjoyed this. Share it with somebody else. We love you guys to death. We're going to go celebrate Linda's birthday. Leave comments below on topics, too, that you kind of want to Please. Yeah, on. definitely. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.